Hello there, this is Dennis James. Welcome to Insuring Your Well-Being. I am the bike and dancing insurance man with various insurance planning. And today we are going to have a unique topic and it is a little different than talking about insurance. All right, the, we are going to be also talking about wellness. All right, and with wellness, I am going to be talking about and sharing with you a demonstration on how to throw a full reverse punch. I spent a lot of years in karate, and um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to do a quick, uh, we're going to talk about a little bit about my background and how karate has uh, enhanced my life through the years, and then I want to demonstrate because Anybody can throw a punch, but everything is about technique, right? And we know that with whatever we do in our, our life. So with that being said, um, first of all, I was um, at age 15. That's when my mom got me into karate, okay? I would have went a lot of different directions. I grew up in Warren, Michigan on the streets and uh it was pretty wild and crazy back then, right? You could have been in the drugs or you could have been doing a lot of other things. So that was actually a turning point for me and uh, because it kind of gave me some discipline and all that. So at age 15, we got, I got signed up with Karate and Judo Schools of America. And that particular style was called Shudo Ru. It was a Japanese style and it was 50 hands, 50 feet. Now, one of the things with that, as I was going through it, you know, you go through the white, white belt, you know, you start right from the beginning, then you get a black stripe, then from there you move into a purple, a, then you get a stripe, and then it goes green, blue, brown. There's three degrees in brown, third, second, and first, and then it becomes a black, a black belt, and then there's different degrees in that. Um, I can tell you it was probably one of the best things that ever happened in my life um, because of what it did for my confidence, kept, kept me off the streets, and eventually I ended up becoming an instructor with Karate and Judo Schools of America. Uh, it was interesting because <laughs> I would be training there, and then I'd come home, and I'd be throwing some kicks and practicing in the front uh, front living room and my dad would get so upset at me because I'd be making all kinds of noises, uh, you know, but I, I mean, I was loving it because I really felt like um, it gave me a um, discipline that I really needed in my life. Uh, so anyhow, one of the things that was happening with that is I was selling clothes part-time, and I, in my senior year, I was going to be a police officer, all right? So I was going to Macomb Center campus, and uh, I was making money on the side, and I was training full-time in karate, all right? I'd, I, every day, I, w I was getting in, involved in, in uh, just learning. And one of the things with that, I was selling clothes at this place called Hughes and & Hatchers, and one of the karate instructors walked in there, the, the guys that started it was two brothers, Larry and Paul Malo. And Paul Malo came in, he came in to buy some clothes, and I knew him, he didn't know me, he, and I had that conversation. I go, wow, you're Mr. Malo, right, Sensei Malo, and um, started talking, and I told him what I was doing. You know, I was going to be a police officer. He goes, you ever thought about being a karate instructor? Well, um, I didn't, but I was already a green belt, and he goes, you know what? We can get you in a blue belt if you were interested because we're interested, uh, uh, you know, in having instructors, and you'd probably be really good at it. And with that, you know, he kind of took me under his wings, and uh, really, that's kind of where I got my start with uh, being a karate instructor. Now, what was interesting about that, I had to tell my mom that I was going to <clears throat> drop out of being a police officer right? She and work for a karate club. And she thought I was crazy. Well, the truth of the matter, that had a big transition in my life because, because of that, 
and I started at age 15. I am in my late 60s today, and I would have to say it has kept me healthy. It for sure always gave me confidence, and uh, that's really what karate will do for anyone and everyone. And I don't care what age you start. I mean, we were, when I was working for the karate clubs, we would start them at age 12. I know today, you know, I mean, they're starting even earlier, five years old, six years old. The question becomes, you know, what is their attention span and that type of thing? And that's why we're bringing them on at age 12. But, I, you know, I taught my own, uh, my own kids, Megan and Christian, and... Uh, it was just cool because it was a real discipline for them, and um, I really believe it can do that for anyone. And I honestly don't believe, I don't really care about what age you are. It's like something is better than nothing, and I can promise you, you can get a good workout whenever you're involved in any type of uh, martial arts because it, it will do that for you. You know, it always comes down to the instruction and, uh, you know, who's t teaching you with technique and that type of thing, because technique is everything whenever you're, you're learning, no matter what it is, right? And then it becomes repetition. You have to rep things. Be very disciplined with being repetition on throwing punches, kicks, and all that. <clears throat> and uh, one of the things with it, too, is... You know, my particular style, not only we had what we called controlled contact. Now, once you got the black belt, it was what they called bonsai technique, right? So uh, what was cool about that, we weren't just pulling punches, right? It was real deal, right? So you learn to control what you're doing, right? Because if you're... you're <laughs> what they call kumatan against somebody else, right? You want to, you know, you don't, you don't need to, even though you're wearing pads, you want to control everything. And if you can't do that, then maybe you shouldn't be doing it. But what the truth of the matter is when you get in the streets and you really have to use it, obviously you'd never do it to cause trouble or start a fight. But you know what? There's a lot of, lot of, a lot of benefits of knowing that you know that you know, right? So that's cool with that. Uh, one of the things I've really realized is the balance and, and um, discipline that it gives you, right? Balance. So when you're throwing uh, front kicks, side kick, back kicks, right, there's, um, you learn uh, what, what we would call balance and control. And um, so that is pretty unique in itself like that. Uh, so one of the things I want to do is I, I – I'm going to teach you a, a basic punch. One of the things that I didn't cover in this really short two-minute uh, video that I, I'm going to be demonstrating that I had videoed is that whenever you go to make a hand position, to you the proper way to make a fist is simply by taking your hands, you curl your fingers, and then you put your knuckles, your your thumb across. You see how I have that right there? Right, I wouldn't want it like that because I could break my thumb, if you can see that, right? So you want to be able, it's like taking, you curl your fingers, and then right there, you put your, put your thumb right there. And you always strike with the first two knuckles, which you'll be seeing when I do that. All right, with that being said, I am going to just click this. You're going to be able to watch this, and we're going to go from there. Hi, how you doing? I'm Dennis James, the bike and dance and insurance man. A lot of people don't know, but I also am a black belt in karate and I trained for a lot of years. So with that being said, I'm going to begin by teaching you a basic full reverse punch. All right, because technique is everything. And then you're gonna to wanna to learn the repetition, all right? Because that's how you get better. It's kind of like ride a bike, right? You gotta get on, you gotta pedal it, you get your, Control, you get top, it's the same thing here. So first thing you're gonna learn is you always strike with the first two knuckles. Now, I'm gonna teach you this from what I call a ready stance to position. Knees should always be flexed. And from here, you're gonna just pull the hands back. Now, whenever you throw a punch, you're gonna be striking with the first two knuckles. All right, so watch, as I come across, first two, I 
let it rub against, and then I, boom, it's a push-pull action, right? And I'm always thinking is turnover at the last minute, striking right there, this is tight. See how I'm doing that? Boom! So, and then you practice just roughing them. Knees stay bent. They call this like a horse stance, and you put punch, push, pull. And then you're gonna do what we call a little more coordination. It's going high, middle, low. High, middle, low. All right, head, <clears throat> solar plex, lower groin. Head, solar plex groin. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, and everyone pulls back. And all right, and then from there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get you into where you strike with the first two knuckles, like I said. And when, from here, you always keep your hands in close. Now I'm a lefty, so I'm considered what they call a southpaw. So I always put my right foot forward, this is more boxing now. You know, and then from there, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get these feet, you're gonna keep the elbows in, just like I just taught you. Hands are here protecting your body. And from here, you do a jab, 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 and across. Jab, cross, jab, cross, jab, cross. See where my hands come? They're always coming back to my face. Straight line here. And then you're gonna to learn to go step, cross. Notice how I pivot? It's all in the hip action. Everything you do, just like when you're doing these, it's hips, it's where your power is at. And then we're gonna throw one more thing in there. So you're going jab, cross, and then it's called a hook. Hook, and you pivot, hook. Pivot. So watch, I go jab, I step, cross, hook. All right, that's what we're gonna do. And then the last thing is gonna be an uppercut. Jab, cross, hook, uppercut. And it comes from here and in, and you drive. Notice how I pivot. All right, and that's what you wanna work on with technique, and you breathe. Okay, that's what you're gonna practice. Now, remember, I started you, I taught you how you're gonna get into what we call a ready stance suit position, and you're always striking with the first two knuckles. We're gonna use the push pull, and we're gonna make sure we strike. All right, and it's hips, hips, ah, ah. All right, that's the first thing we worked on. And then from there, we talked about the jab. We're gonna be, that's our end. We step, cross, then you're gonna come through with a hook and an uppercut. So basically you're going step and boom, boom. All right? All right, so that kind of gives you a little feel of how to throw that full reverse punch. All right, you know, I um, also spent some years doing some kickboxing after my black belt, and that's where the boxing came in with the kickboxing, right? Uh, obviously, I wasn't getting in that, showing anything with front kicks, side kicks, back kicks, roundhouses. Um, but uh, just knowing those types of moves right there, uh, you know, you can really turn that into a workout if you want to. You know, that's the cool thing about it, right? You start repping kicks. Num I would say, number one, you want to be able to get the technique down, right? So you work on the full reverse where you're reversing each punch. You pull it back to your hip when you're practicing that. You make sure you get into a ready stance, too. You step out with that left. You want to make sure that uh, when as you step out, you're going to pull both hands back just above the, the waist, the hip. And then from there, you... Make sure that you throw the full reverse punch. You keep turning it over at the last minute, making sure you strike with the first two knuckles, 
All right, that's really important. Uh, and then after making sure your hands and your fist is tight. And then as you're throwing the punch, you want to still stay relaxed, all right? And that comes with time and practice. But, right, every time you throw until the point of contact, you should be totally relaxed. That's what's going to give you the speed. And then I talked to you about the hips. All your power is in your hips, and you want to make sure that you keep your you, you keep your knees flexed, all right? You want to stay flexed in your knees. You don't want to ever lock your knees uh, at all, all right? So, and you work on the breathing, right? So each time you throw the punch, it's like you exhale, whoo, whoo, right? So you step, punch, step, punch. So when I was talking to you about that, where you get more into a boxing, the important thing is to always keep your hands in really close and you protect your face, right? Yeah. And I would suggest probably if you enjoy doing this, you want to watch what I'm doing, but you also want to tune in to other people, other boxers, because they're going to show some great technique and they're going to always go back to, you know, coming right back to protecting your body. That's just as important, all right? Uh, that means your face, and, right? And also keeping the hands in to protect your, um, right, your kidneys and all that. So uh, with that being said, um, the other things uh, that I would say is um, work on speed, right? And you should rep these. And then I was talk, sharing with you the, the high, middle, low, all right, where you're going head, solar plex, uh, in what they would say groin level, all right? And that kind of gives you a good feel for where you're doing that. So, you know, you work, work it towards the coordination in it, right? And in Make sure you focus on if you're throwing to the face, throw to the face, all right? Get the, uh, almost like there's somebody there and you're actually going to be doing it as, as on purpose, right? You're going to, so it's that um, being, you know, like confident and just knowing that, all right, this is where I'm going with this, so get ready. And, uh, and you stay relaxed, as I said with that. Um, you know, there's so much more to it that you can learn, right? Uh, usually when I was showing you that boxing technique, right, uh, you want to make sure it's the same thing. I would probably, I would use gloves. I was not using gloves. I mean, you know, if you, you anytime you're using the punching into the bag or you're doing anything, you want to make sure that you're wearing a bag. You're going to protect your, I was just doing that because I was doing demonstrations. Normally I would be using some type of uh, gloves, all right, usually boxing clubs, th different ones, you know, you can get some good deals on. And especially if you get serious about it, I would definitely suggest that. If you join a karate club, uh, you know, and I would recommend doing that, uh, whatever works for you. I, and I don't care what age you are. I mean, you know, you go in with yourself, go in with a friend. Sometimes that helps. Uh, you know, if you're a dad, take your kid in there and do it, you know, father, son, or father, take the whole family, all right, because it's a great thing to do as a family, uh, it's a great way to connect with your kids, and you're going to, you're going to find out that that can be really w rewarding, um, as they get older because of the discipline, and, you know, even for parents, right, uh, don't make excuses, you know, find something you love doing. If it's, you know, martial arts, there's a lot of great clubs out there, a lot of different styles. There's Taekwondo, there's Mudaquan, Shudo Ru, Ishin Ru. As I said, the st style that I was, which was the Japanese style uh, called Shudo Ru. And there's a lot of, um, you know, you just got to kind of look uh, you know, what are their hours and what's it going to cost me? You know, I would probably say, you know, go in, ask for a free workout, you know, see how you like it. A lot of them will give you a, at least one free workout, you know, and it could be a week, you know. Um, but, you know, go in and try it, but don't waste their time. You know, either you're going to, you know, be, you want to give it a shot or don't want to give it a shot, all right? Uh, the reality is um, it takes time. You have to be discipline you got to want to do it enough to 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 learn the basics right once you learn the basics a lot of times then you're going to find out that wow you know this is kind of new and the other cool thing is it real help you in other other sports no matter what it is 
I just know from uh, when I got into dancing as an example, right, with ballroom dancing, even though it's a whole lot different, there were certain things that, that really helped. And you will see, because I'm going to be doing routines, because I have a background in ballroom dancing, all right, like, uh, you know, gold level ballroom dancing, and I took up jazz dancing and that type of thing. And that's just a whole nother story. And I'm, because that's one of my passions also, I am going to share that. Because there's technique in everything you do. But I do realize that with the, the karate, I, I can mix it with the dance. And um, those two kind of go together. You know, I'm a... a I do choreography, and you'll see some of the routines I do. I choreograph it to, to the music. So um, you can look forward to seeing that if you're interested. Uh, you know, I have fun doing it, uh, and, um, but it, 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 it flows because of my background with the uh, dance. But the reality is I know how to throw the punches and the kicks. So, um, you know, they work hand in hand. Uh, what else can I tell you? Um, I would say um, give it a shot. Work out. Make it a workout. So when you're hitting wherever you're going, you know, uh, work on technique and, and all that, you should always wrap it up with repetitions. All right. Um, eventually, I'm going to be bringing on some other karate experts too. All right. People that are in the martial arts of <clears throat> MMA. All right. Um, it's like chocolate ice cream. That's not for everybody. All right. But they're uh, they got their act together. Right. And you, you don't get into the uh, into the uh, boxing arena, MMA, unless you have your technique down. Right. And that takes a lot of discipline to do that. The other thing that I, I just thought of as I'm talking is jumping rope. Skipping rope is really a fabulous exercise. Right. Because of. Um, you work, you work technique, right? You, you want to learn how to jump or use it, uh, you know, but it's great for uh, cardiovascular endurance. You're obviously going to burn calories and that type of thing. And also one of the other things, you know, even though I'm teaching you this type of thing, there's a lot of self-defense. If somebody grabs you, right, there's, I mean, there's techniques behind everything, and that's really good for self-defense. Either myself or I'm going to have somebody bring on and uh, just teach basic self-defense. I think that's good for anybody, especially women. You know, I mean, I have a daughter and I have a wife. And uh, to me, it's important that they know how to protect themselves. And, uh, and it's very simple, right? Because it's not, it's just knowing how to do it, you know, and, and loud enough to get away or whatever you have to do or you just take the guy's throat and you rip it out, uh, <laughs> whatever works, right? Because he shouldn't have been messing with you in the first place. Uh, let's see. Future podcast, I am doing things on wellness, all right? I uh, really believe in wellness, and so I am going to be bringing – uh, I'm using my background with the karate and the dancing, right, because I know those well. But I also, uh, you know, that's maybe not inspiring to everybody. So, um, you know, I think we need to have people that are golf pros, right, or pickleball pros. Or we could go on and on with any kind of sport. And I will be doing that because one thing is somebody talking about it, but let's demonstrate it, all right? Let's learn some basics and techniques, and let's make it happen that way. Uh, my whole mission behind this is to get people moving, all right? You, you need to move. Uh, something is always better than nothing. Find what you like, and you just take action, and you do it, all right? And, 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 the, and it will be a tenfold thing for you. You know, and then there's going to be a lot more that I'm going to be bringing, and that's nutrition, and um, because I think that's really important too, right? It's what you put in your body, right? So it's all about good nutrition. It's about movement, action, you know, and try to get better all the time. Do what you can do. Don't compare yourself to others, but do something because 
the payoff, especially as you get older, all right? You know, you snooze, you lose in this world, right? And if you're not moving, your muscles are going to pay a price later, all right? So um, it's just like everything, right? We have to be moderate with what we smoke and drink and doing none of, any of that. You know, it's not healthy for you. You know, I, I, I'll be, reality is I'll have occasional wine with my wife or with, when I'm with people. But the reality is I have uh, really paid attention to that because I know that any of that going into your body, I feel like how it's, it's affected my sleep. So, so it's those little things. All right. But uh, I'm going to just um, propose to you is that um, get with a friend. You know, find a local gym. Like, I'm a member of Lifetime, Planet Fitness, right? So when I'm not riding my bike because I am the biking, dancing, insurance man, uh, right, that pedaling that bike has had, had big rewards for me, right? I've, uh, you know, I've done a lot of 100-mile bike rides. Uh, I'm not getting any younger, but the truth of the matter is I still push myself. I try to listen to my body, and I want to get better. And there's technique in biking also, right? Uh, and I often think about the breathing and the technique with whatever you do, and that plays a major role. Uh, I've been doing code plunges lately, all right? I don't know. Um, my wife got me over Father's Day a code plunge, so guess what? We're doing that together. And... Um, Grounding is a big thing. There's a guy named Gary Burkle that is on, and he talks a lot about uh, that and getting early in the morning, you know, get that sun, uh, which has that vitamin D. And uh, those types of things all play a role on how you feel and act throughout your day. Now, being in the insurance business is a great business because I um, – really help a lot of people. You know, it's kind of interesting, long-term care insurance. Nobody wants to talk about it, but the reality is that it can, uh, has, has dividends and payoffs for loved ones and families, and it gives you a sense of security. Um, uh, and then life insurance, there's a John Hancock Vitality Program that is life-changing, and uh, the program there, that gets people moving, all right? And it teach, pe teaches people to do um, health assessments and that type of thing, all right? So when you're working on, you, you, you work out for 30 minutes at a gym or you could be working out at home, you're going to get rewards and there's a lot of benefits to that. Their whole idea is to m get people moving and uh, be, they're not going to pay death claims out as quick, right? So that's kind of a cool thing. Uh, and so if you go to variousinsuranceplanning.com, you could check that out. I'm going to be having this particular podcast on there, and you can watch this live if you want these techniques. I'm always open to ideas and suggestions. All these different programs, every one podcast I do is going to you can see it live on my website. Like I says, it's variousinsuranceplanning.com. If you enjoy learning, uh, share it with others. You know, I obviously want to get the word out and I want to help people. And that means helping them through my lifestyle, spending, uh, being in my late 60s. And, you know, I'm not bragging about it, but I'm awful grateful that I've been blessed enough to be disciplined enough to find things I enjoy and be consistent and then turn around and be able to share it with the audience. And I'm talking about people like you. So if you have any questions, you know, please schedule a time. I want you to uh, enjoy yourself and just make it happen because you deserve a great life. All right. So. I'm going to be checking out of here. Uh, again, I am Dennis James with the Insuring Your Wellbeing podcast. And I am the biking, dancing, insurance man with various insurance planning. Make it a great day.